Maz Gazi again, light up your den. Me and my Alps, we'll be at it again. Horse ready, sword ready. Take a man's head if you talk heavy. If you live by the rules and you're talking the truth, you won't get buried with your head. Has he just admitted on camera, in 4K by the way, that he set his own place on fire? He has just admitted, I've done it before and I'll do it again. What's he gonna do? Wait a couple of more months and then set it on fire again and blame this whole scenario between this beef between me and him. He's like, yeah, Angus had you done it. Like, this guy has just committed the biggest fraud in supercar history. What's going on, guys? So, the wait is finally over. Welcome to another episode of Cream Access uh, as we take you behind the scenes with a situation that I didn't really want to go public with, but unfortunately, um, as many of you are aware, there's been some very serious allegations put towards us by this chap here. So we're making this video um, to simply clear our name, of course. Unfortunately, um, some very, very serious allegations, as I said earlier, has been made towards us and our business. Um, and on most part, most people can see through, see through the bullshit, to be fair. And we have a huge amount of love and support um, that don't want to hear an explanation because they believe in us and they know what we represent and what we stand for. Uh, but unfortunately, obviously, there is a minority of people out there that don't know us, that, has, that have come across this video and now know us um, through the sharing of the video on not only his platform, but others, social media influencers that have been, you know, supporting him and egging him on. So we want to touch base on absolutely everything that he's ha said in this. Um, and not just this, but everything that has led to this. All the accusations that have been made, the lies, um, the stories being told about what happened here and his car and the people that came in. We'll touch base on everything. So I have no intention to bring up any more stories uh, about him or his family members. I have no intention to, uh, to slander or anything like that. I'm simply going to touch on everything that's been said. You know, we, you have to understand that we are a professional organisation. We are public figures um, and we are influencers and we have... Uh, a large audience, especially youngsters that follow us and look up to us. So we can't be putting out this video in a way where we're trying to talk like gangsters. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're not about that life. Not on social media. It's not what we do. If you want to fire shots, you know, you want to, you have an issue, you can come and see me. We can sit this out, we can talk it out, we can handle it however you want. But firing shots on social media and trying to be social media gangsters ain't our thing. It's not what we do. But unfortunately, you have to fight fire with fire, right? So that's why we've been um, this whole thing from the beginning, from the get-go, has been uh, aired on social media because it's, it started off with his friend Yanni, as I'm sure all of you are aware. Um, so yeah, as I said, you've got fight fire with fire and it's stemmed from that and it's got completely out of hand with this guy jumping on board for his own clout. And when I say clout, you only have to look at his first two YouTube videos on his channel, which is all about me, basically. That gives you an indication as to what his real intentions are with all of this. And we'll talk about it. So let's start with um, the backstory. Now, many of you know um, and have seen that I've called out Yanni on multiple occasions on my social media platform, um, inviting him to a celebrity boxing match. And that's because me and Yanni, uh, we, we've not seen eye to eye for some time now, since going back to 2017, in fact when he was unhappy with one of his clients coming to me to have some work done on his vehicle. Now, originally, this guy came to us to have a custom body kit made for his Ferrari 408. He wanted us to paint his wheels in rose gold. So you may remember the car, the rose gold Ford Giotto wheels that we painted uh, on a Ferrari 408 with rose gold accents around the car. Now, that was the very first car that we built the carbon uh, body kit for. Now... When that customer came to me, now, although that was the first time he came to me, we knew of each other. He was very, very close friends with my friends. Um, and uh, this was the first time he used me. Now, he was a client of Yanni's as well at the time. And Yanni got his back up. Didn't like the fact that he came to me. Um, and when he spoke to him, they had a fallout over it and stuff. He even said to him that if you come down to me with that car and cash his name on it, I'm going to take the, the branding off and all that sort of stuff. It was like really, really, really petty. That's when I first experienced the bitterness and hate from Yanni and um, the first time I actually ever experienced him having no faith in his own brand and seeing me as a threat. And it's worth mentioning that the hate wasn't towards the rose gold wheels or accents around the car, it was actually the body kit. That's what the hate was towards. Now I don't get it because see, me and Yanni, well, we were friends before this. It was actually Yanni that uh, recommended us 
to the client because the client bought Yanni's old wheels for his Ferrari and um, they were silver. He wanted them to be rose gold and Yanni told him that the only person that he knows that could do that would be me. So I even thanked him. I thanked him publicly at the live reveal when I revealed the car in Central London as we do. And I also thanked him by text saying, thanks for the referral, appreciate it. I actually did that. So why he got salty when we did the kit, it doesn't make sense to me because he accepted that he didn't do rose gold paintwork or any kind of chrome paintwork like we do. So he referred the client to us. As I said, we were fine then at that time. We used to get on really well. I mean, as you know, I went to his 40th. Um, and then he got salty when we did done a body kit. Now, if he was doing a body kit, um, and I know he started Nero Designs to, to try and compete with us at that sort of time. Um, if he was doing a 408 body kit, then I'll get it, yeah? I kind of stood on his toes a little bit, yeah? But I didn't do that. The client said to me, what else can you do for the car to make it look nicer? And I said, listen, this is what we're about. This is who we are, this is what we do, and you know what we do. So if you want something made quite quickly, we can do that. We can turn it around really quick. And he went with, went with it. If he only done a body kit with a car, I would never have in a million years stepped on his toes, because that's, that's a bit of a liberty. I don't do that. Um, and at the same time, up until now, it's worth mentioning that Nero have never ever produced a body kit for a Ferrari 408. That's now some, God, how long has it been? Four or five years? Do you see my point? So there was no reason for him to get annoyed or upset about what this client was doing with me. Now, I'm no way, uh, in any way, intend to, you know, make a video slagging all these people off because it's not about that. It's just about facts and truth. So that's what I'm going to be putting to you. This is where this has all stemmed from. It went on from there and then, um, more shots fired. I mean, this whole thing with this black Ferrari and rose gold uh, accents and wheels went on social media. It all went off. Many of you saw it. Shots were fired left, right and centre from his people first, um, who have apologised, actually, to be fair. So, you know, big up Lenny. Um, but shots were fired back and forth and everyone saw for themselves what was actually going on. There was no need for it. I was just doing my work, what I'm good at doing, did my job, customer was happy, we smashed it out with another Ferrari 4, with well, the first Ferrari 408 with our body kit. And he got butt hurt over it. And then moving, moving on from that, when we did another client's vehicle, again, that was once his client as well. And here's the thing, like, you know, we don't own our clients. Our clients are entitled to go to where they want to go, you know? Unless, I mean, obviously you're f super close with them and, you know, they become your friends and they become part of your circle. Then it's, I suppose loyalty may come into it a little bit. Um, especially if you're looking after them on prices and sponsorships and that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, if it's just clients and they've been to you to have work done, you can't moan about them if they want to go and use a rival. You know, you can't. I've had plenty of my clients that have gone elsewhere and I'm not bat an eyelid over it. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, they paid me my money and they paid me in full without asking or, you know, ask for discounts and that sort of thing. And that's cool. If you're going to come here and you're going to you know, expect me to take care of you, look after you, you know, make you part of the cream la familia, if you like, then obviously it's a kind of a bit more of a different scenario. You expect a bit of loyalty back. You know, you, it goes both ways, doesn't it? But anyway, nonetheless, um, so another client came to us, which many of you know of, Mel, in a Ferrari. And um, this car, we took it to the next level. It was wrapped by him. We kept the wrap that was on there. We didn't touch, touch any of that. Um, but we put the new body kit on there. With her car, we developed a new brand new rear spoiler. So her car was then further developed with a brand new kit uh, version, should I say. And... Um, we uh, installed air lift and exhaust system on there as well. So we took it to the next level. And then the car went to Autosport International. And many of you know the story again, shots were fired. Once again, he was there physically. He got pissed off with Hexis um, because Hexis had my Bentley, rose gold Bentley on their stand. He actually walked over to their stand and he started swearing and effing and blinding in front of my kids that were there as well and saying, what the F is this car doing here? It shouldn't be here and all the rest of it. You know, uh, I'm Yanni from Yanni Mize and we use your product and all that sort of stuff. And Hexis was like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. If you wanted to have a car on our stand, you could have asked and we would have had one on here, but we, you don't own us. We are our own company at the end of the day. Whether you use us or not doesn't mean that, you know, you get to dictate who, whose car we have on our stand. You know, my Bentley was wrapped in rose gold chrome by Hexis. It was their film, their material. So that was when things really kind of went off and, you know, I really have to control uh, and keep my cool and keep my wits about myself that day because we were filming for Supercar Superfam that day. Um, and the, they were there and they, they obviously knew and were aware of the situation uh, and what was going on. And, uh, you know, it just took the piss because, like, we had th these guys, that, you know, they're grown-ass men. They're not kids. 
I, you won't ever hear any stories of me going around doing something like that with anyone. You know, I have faith in my own marriage. I don't watch no one in this industry. You know why? Because no one in this industry does what I do, period. So, you know, when it comes to what we do, it, it just, it's, it's quite upsetting that people would, you know, see us as a threat like that. Do you know what I mean? Welcome us and, and appreciate what we're doing. Appreciate our input into the car customs world. Because, you know, if you think about it, look, look at our resume. Look at what we've been doing for the last 20 years. Look at our achievements. You know, we're the only car customs shop that has flown the flag at SEMA in Vegas. Three years in a row, yeah? We were meant to go for the fourth, but COVID hit. We've got three or four being built at, this, at the moment for 2022, Vegas, SEMA. The biggest car convention in the world. We're the only ones that have achieved that. We're the only ones to have had uh, a mainstream BBC television show. The only ones. And we've been on the BBC Breakfast Show this morning, The One Show. These are all mainstream platforms, by the way. They're not like Backstreet Sky Channel or anything like that. They're, they are mainstream uh, TV channel platforms, okay? We've been on all of those. And at the same time, we've had um, our brand featured in CSR Racing 2, which is a globally recognized and most downloaded racing car game, mobile game, okay? But these are major, major feats, man. You can't take that away from us. The Gentleman movie, which is Guy Ritchie's production, got to even play a little cameo myself, even though you never got to see my face, I was driving the car. But nonetheless, you'll see that now, everyone's talking about it because that film is actually out on Netflix as we speak. Um, Fast and Furious, going back to, gosh, 2004, we're talking about now. Fast and Furious, where we had the only vehicle on display on the red carpet premiere with all the movie stars, came down and took photographs in front of, you can Google it yourself, Fast and Furious uh, 4, Leicester Square, film premiere. The only car on display is a car that we specifically built for the red carpet. That's no small feat, we was approached by Universal Film Studios for that. And then we come back uh, and for Fast 6, we had several vehicles again on display for the world premiere in Leicester Square. On both occasions, we got to sit front row in the cinema alongside the stars. Like, that's a big deal. So going back to Autosport, you know, I mean, you had his manager lifting up the cover, uh, the cover on the car. The car was on a, uh, on the Canon Run stand. And uh, we're going back to Mel's Ferrari, by the way. Um, lifting up the cover and messaging the client saying, your car looks shit, what have you done to it? You know, flagging it off. I mean, obviously, there's no need for that. And that really, really shows what you're about as a, as a person, an individual. Not only are you you're, you doing it, but your manager was doing it too. That's sad, do you know what I'm saying? The girl's been your client, she still is your client, she's never stopped, you know, said that she will never use you again, but she's come to us to have stuff done that you don't do. You don't do tuning and exhaust systems, you don't do um, air lift suspension, you don't do custom boot installs or, 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 or uh, things like that. You don't do any of that stuff. You don't do body kit manufacturing in your shop. You don't do it. So what's the problem? Why did you have to hate? There was no need for it whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? And then obviously shots were fired from that. Social media all went off again and it went off really bad this time to a point where uh, he was quite badly exposed um, and he had to message me privately to say that shall we just take our messages off and call it a day? because it did, get, it did get to that level where it was quite horrible. The fact was, he asked me, uh, he, well, he flew, he threw the towel in, and um, he asked me to uh, delete messages on both our, delete the posts on both our pages and call it a day. So I agreed because the fact was, it, it's not professional. But you have to fight fire with fire. So if someone's gonna shoot, um, fire shots at me on social media, then I'm not gonna just sit there and be quiet. I don't come from that kind of life either. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not that kind of person that won't fire back if someone moves to me. Don't, that's not gonna happen. Do you know what I mean? But yes, I agree that we are adults, we're all grown ass men, and we shouldn't be behaving like this, especially in front of the younger audience. It's not a good look. It's not the sort of influence we wanna put out there. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're supposed to be bloody role models. But moving on from that, that's where our history is with Yanni and you know why things are funny and we've never really seen eye to eye um, ever since then. Obviously, the recent, most recent thing that happened was obviously the latest development that we've done for the Lamborghini Hurricane, which is the SDO inspired body kit that we made for it, you right, right? Now that client was also a fan of Yanni's. They've had work done by Yanni before. I had no issue with them going, he told me that he was gonna go to Yanni um, after I'd done the car. I had no issue with that. Again, he paid his money and he was, you know, everything was fine, but he went to Yanni and, uh, you know, Yanni put a post up with a car. And when I was told about it by somebody that, oh, you know, and, and actually I was tagged left, right and center on his post. And um, I saw it and I thought, okay, right, we're not getting on, but 
ratings. I, I, that's actually what I thought. Ratings, he's going to put my latest work on his page. Of course, he's not credited me or tagged me, which is fine. He doesn't have to. It's his page. He doesn't have to do that. But he's put the post up, which was, you know, I, I rated him for that. But then what happened after that, I completely um, took my ratings back because it was just, it was petty. It was so petty and it showed, not showed just me, but it showed everyone what he's about. Because what had happened was the comments started coming in thick and fast, showing the build love, right? Tagging cream and showing it love. And do you know what he did? He deleted absolutely all of them. He didn't leave a single good comment that was showing love to my work. That's when I thought, hold on. Now that's taking the mix because the couple of comments that were not positive, that were hate comments, you left them. You left those. So what does that t tell you about him? He was, why was he so salty? Why, why would he put that video up, so that picture up, sorry, and then delete the comments? Like, look, you don't have to credit me. Cool, I get that, it's your page, you ain't gotta do that. But you then go and delete everyone else's showing love? Now that really annoyed me. So then obviously I went at social media and then I said my piece. Okay, so that's where we are at, at with it. And the last thing that um, Yanni done, which was probably the most serious, in my opinion, was the voice recording that was sent to me by, by DMO on his own admission. Um, this voice recording was a call that was made to Yanni. And in that phone call, the guy was recording it, by the way, um, in that phone call, Yanni proceeds to slag me off. And you can hear the recording here. Should we do the cash one as well? I, 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 can, keep, I can cash. Cash, uh, rape issues, yeah, fraud, drugs. What, what, what cash is committed rape? But if you do your homework on individual people and companies, mm -hmm. it's very easy to find out the truth. Do your homework on me. There's nothing bad on me. A scream was the easiest one, but I couldn't go at them because the, all the exposure would have been for them. Thank you. So under the same breath, not only are you accusing me of these uh, disgusting accusations, but at the same time, you're actually clearing my name because you're right, Yanni. You can do your homework with individual people and it's very easy to find out the truth. You can just go into Google, Google my name, Google my company, and see if you can find out anything on fraud, rape, drugs. You won't find any of that. You will not find any of that. So thank you very much because you answered your own question and I'm gonna dead that right here, right now. As you, can, as you heard, that was an utter violation. Um, there was no need for that whatsoever. That right there, what he was saying, is the sort of stuff that's gonna affect my bread and butter. Do you know what I mean? I would, I've never done that about him or done it to him or about him, I've never done that. There's no need for it. Why would you have to speak about me like that to somebody like, when there was, there was no beef with us at the time. There was nothing really going on. So you're just randomly speaking to random people that phone you and you just start ripping into me and DMO, but that's a separate thing, I don't care about that. He sent me the segment where you're ripping into me. And you guys all heard what he just said there. Baseless accusations, baseless stories about me and uh, trying to tarnish my good name, yeah? I don't take things like that lightly at all. So I sat on it for a couple of years. You know, being in the position that I'm in and obviously the position that, position that he's in, I didn't want to tarnish or ruin my reputation or career. So it was something that I, would, uh, I was going to handle in due course in time then an opportunity came as you all are aware box stars contacted me box stars is a boxing promotion company a very big company you can check them out they've been around 10 years successfully holding celebrity boxing matches and they contacted me and asked me they're actually fans as well and said cash uh, we've got a very big fight coming up in april uh, with martin ford who's uh, an actor bodybuilder um, and uh, the Iranian Hulk from Iran. And um, they said to me, uh, would you like to fight on the undercards? So I was like, wow, okay. Do you know what? It's not a bad shout because this is how I can handle the situation. We could take it to um, mainstream television. We could uh, settle our differences once and for all in the ring and it would be a win-win situation because even the winner, even the loser, should I say, walks away getting paid with a fee. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to call Yanni out, let everyone know about this voice note as well, yeah? Um, and challenge him, a public challenge. In a nutshell, I challenged him publicly on more than one occasion. That was the um, strategy that me and Boxar spoke about. 
they said call him out publicly and once you know you've done it two or three times we'll then contact him privately and offer him the fight you can see that he never surfaced he never came out he never spoke he never responded he just stayed quiet but what he did do was he started pulling strings like he always does uh, on the leashes on on his on his dogs basically yeah he's very well known to uh, sit in the background and let other people do the dirty work for him. He throws people under the bus. Um, it's happened with all of his friends that are in his circle, hence why most of his friends have fallen out with him. Um, now, now, when I put this post out, Mr. Amit Tarek, who made the video, he commented on there and said that, you know, he's never gonna take the fight. We offered it to you and you declined it or something like that about a year ago. And that's not, that's not quite true because the truth of that situation was actually very, very different. We were speaking about his vehicle that came in, if you remember, the Lamborghini. And he, under the same breath, same conversation, he then spoke about something that he's doing that's top secret at that time. I said, okay, what is it? He said to me, oh, well, I'm looking at starting a boxing promotions company. I said, all right, cool. Um, then he asked me that, um, no, then he said, I was going to ask you if you want to, you know, if you want to come on board and be a fighter. But, you know, because of your illness and your situation, you know, with Crohn's disease, um, I don't think you'd be up for it. I said, no, you know, I'm, I'm down. I said, but you know, obviously, um, who do you want me to fight? And he said, obviously, Yanni. I said, well, that's what I want to hear. I said, cool, well, okay, that's no problem for me. I'll fight Yanni any day of the week. That's, it's again, settling my differences with him in a professional manner. And um, I never declined anything at any stage. There was no uh, declining of any fight, uh, except the fact that potentially if, my, if I'm sick, then yeah, I won't be able to fight. And he also, said that the reason why he never contacted me about it to get me on board was because he thought I wouldn't be up for it because of my illness. And I'm like, no, bro. <laughs> Listen, if, it's, if you're talking about Yanni, I'm down, 100%. Any excuse for me to batter him professionally, I'll, I'll, I'm on it. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, he said, yeah, cool. I'll get back in touch once I've got the ball rolling and I've got everything you know set up in place. I'll shout you. He said, cool, done. So he's offered us this opportunity. Um, and when I've asked him, what do I get in return? Because obviously, ultimately, that, that's what I care about. He was like, what do you mean? I said, well, what's on the table? Well, what do you want cash? Because, you know, I'm talking publicity. I'm like, what you, publicity? He said, well, yeah, you're going to get clout from this. You know, he's obviously a major name. He's a big name, all the rest of it, which obviously he's got a big following and whatnot. And uh, we put this fight together. You're going to get ma massive uh, publicity. Imagine the amount of subscribers you're going to gain on your YouTube channel and uh, followers on Instagram. I said, are you having a laugh? I said, you, do I look like some sort of mug that I'm going to go put myself in a ring, put myself at risk, fight a guy just so you can earn the money off the back of mine and his name because being the fact that you're the boxing promotions company that you've uh, established and set up and we're going to be fighting under your company you're clearly going to be doing this to earn money and pay-per-view and tickets and whatnot that's what you're going to be doing of course just like anybody else so how on earth are you going to offer me followers and subscribers from that point on from that moment when you said that i thought my this guy's talking a lot of bullshit and everyone knows that's watching this everyone knows that Yanni is a businessman. He will never in a million years sign any contracts to fight someone for clout. Because he's got it already. He's already that guy. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's got a big following on YouTube and on Instagram. So why on earth is he going to fight under your name? Your name who's, respectfully speaking, nobody in the industry, not even in the boxing promotion industry. Your company is not even heard of. It's not known. You haven't launched it on any platform. And up until now, when all this bullshit started you've used this situation to actually launch it you said so yourself to me on the phone so a year ago it was unknown up until now it's been unknown for one whole year it's been unknown okay it's been an idea in your mind right whether you've signed stuff with him or not is another question i don't know i can't answer that so i won't even go into that but the fact is there's no way in the world world yanni is going to sign contracts to fight for no money yeah he's a businessman and i'm a businessman if we're going to fight we want to get paid period simple it's common sense we ain't going to be doing it for clout because one he doesn't need it and two i'm not bothered about clout if i was i'd be spending money on marketing agencies and all sorts of different people or buying followers just like everybody else does but if you notice we don't our following organic it's slow slow moving and it doesn't bother us we don't really care because our income is generated from what we do here it's not generated from all of that Box Stars is um, an established company. It's been around 10 years. They've got contracts in place that no other people can get hold of, i.e. having venues like the O2 Centre, 
boxed off. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they offered me a very big opportunity to fight. What I forgot to mention earlier was when I spoke to them and I agreed that I would do this, I agreed it on a different contract. I said to them that I'm pretty sure Yanni would be of the same opinion if he takes his fight, that he ain't gonna wanna fight on the undercards. And nor am I. If I, me and him are gonna go head to head, let's make it a headline fight. And do you know what they said? They said, Cash, if he agrees a fight, I'll give you a headline fight. Okay, so there you have it guys. That's the backstory to the situation. Um, sorry about the length uh, and the time it's taken to obviously uh, make this video for you. It's important to us that you guys all, as viewers and fans and our followers, understand uh, how this all started and why it's got to this, do you understand? Um, this is not a good look for anyone. We are not enjoying this the slightest. We're a car customs company. We don't need to be making videos about stuff like this. I don't think it's a good look for any of us in a professional basis. I don't think anyone's enjoying it, if I'm honest, apart from Amio, to be fair. But on a business perspective, none of us are enjoying what's going on here. This is not what we're about or what we represent or what we do. Nonetheless, there's been very serious allegations made and allegations that are raising a lot of people's eyebrows and they want to hear outside of the story. Hence why we've done this video for you guys. Stay tuned for part two. Hope you guys enjoyed part one, uh, but it does get more juicier. So definitely make sure you like, subscribe and share this video and turn your notifications on for part two.